This video about the great career of Seattle Seahawks quarterback Dave Craig was requested by a patron. Patrons in the top tier get early access to videos and the ability to cut the line and request future video topics for me to cover. To become a patron, click the card in the upper right corner or the link in the description. And now, on with our feature presentation. A while ago, I made a video about this man right here, Baltimore Ravens quarterback Scott Mitchell, who, let's just say, was not exactly the most loved figure with the Ravens when it came to his play on the field. If you want to learn more about that, you can do so by clicking the card in the upper right corner. However, the main controversy surrounding him came with what he was wearing, and in particular, the jersey number that he wore. Mitchell had the brilliant idea, seeing as he wore the number 19 jersey for his entire NFL career, to wear the number 19 jersey in Baltimore and continue doing that. The only problem? That was the number of the legendary Johnny Unitas, a beloved icon in the city. And a huge firestorm erupted over whether Mitchell should be able to wear the number, especially since, to this day, Mitchell remains the only Reebok to ever wear the number 19 jersey. But what you might not know is that this was not the first time during the 1990s that there was a uniform controversy involving a quarterback and a bird team in the AFC, as specific as that might seem. Because even though you might know about the Scott Mitchell thing, you might not know about this man right here. This is Seattle Seahawks quarterback Dave Craig. By this point in his career, Craig was on the Arizona Cardinals and was on his fourth team in the NFL. However, for over a decade, he was one of the faces of the Seattle Seahawks franchise and was the man under center who did a lot of great things for the team. And when people thought of his jersey number, well, they only thought of him. That was until another quarterback came along and took his number, which caused a massive firestorm and controversy that deserves a deep dive nearly three decades later for just how bizarre it was. Because this is the story behind what might just be, considering the circumstances and the bizarre logic behind it all, the strangest uniform controversy in the nearly half century long history of the Seattle Seahawks franchise. Before I talk about the actual controversy in question and what happened during the 1995 season, we need some context to understand what was happening before 1995. In particular, what was happening with this man right here, none other than quarterback Dave Craig. Craig has a legitimate case for being the most underrated quarterback in the history of the sport. And I do not say that lightly. Is he a Hall of Famer? Absolutely not. Although some try and make the argument. Only two quarterbacks to predominantly play in the Super Bowl era are in the Hall of Fame without making it to a single Super Bowl, with those two guys being Warren Moon and Dan Fouts. And I cannot whatsoever put Craig in that tier of guys. Having said that, he was a very good quarterback who was probably a top five quarterback of his era during his peak, who compared quite favorably to his peers, especially considering the fact that he went to a college called Milton, that when he took over the starting job, literally did not exist anymore. He was an undrafted free agent long shot, who had never stepped on a plane before his tryout with Seattle. And it was such a long shot to make the roster that he actually wound up rooming with a staff member during his first camp because they didn't have enough rooms. And yet, considering all of that, Dave Craig established himself as one of the best signal callers in the NFL and as a love figure in Seattle for over a decade. Over his 12-year career with the Seahawks, he started 119 games and made it to three Pro Bowls receiving this honor in 1984, 1988, and 1989. During the 1983 season, after coming in during the second half of the year to replace Jim Zorn, 
He guided the Seahawks not just to their first playoff appearance in franchise history, but all the way to the AFC Championship. Craig had six straight seasons with the Seahawks, where he finished inside the top 10 in the NFL in passing touchdowns, including back-to-back second-place finishes in 1984 and 1985, predictably losing the battle both of those years to Miami Dolphins legend Dan Marino. And perhaps most impressively, three times in his career with Seattle, he led the league amongst all qualified players in touchdown percentage, meaning the percentage of passing attempts that went for a touchdown. He threw a touchdown on 7.4% of his passes in 1983, when he really took over the starting job and never looked back, 7.8% of his passes in 1987, and 7.9% of his passes in 1988. Those are really good numbers. And for some perspective, the only other quarterbacks in NFL history to lead the league in that category at least three times at the time, it was a very exclusive club featuring just a few guys. Frank Ryan of the Cleveland Browns, Johnny Unitas of the Baltimore Colts, Tommy Thompson of the Philadelphia Eagles, and Wyatt Tittle of the San Francisco 49ers and the New York Giants. Anytime you're one of five guys in a club, and two of the others are Y.A. Tittle and Johnny Unitas, surefire Hall of Famers, you know you did something right. And by the time his career in Seattle was done, he was the all-time leader in franchise history, with 26,132 passing yards, 70 wins, and 195 passing touchdowns, nearly doubling the previous record holder, which was Jim Zorn at 107. He was also the all-time leader in passer rating, posting a rating of 82.3. You name a stat, and he was the leader in it by the time he left the Seahawks after the 1991 season. Dave Craig was a heck of a quarterback, and there's a reason he's still extremely fondly remembered today, because he was a big reason why the Seahawks were consistently threats in the AMC West throughout the 1980s, and were sort of mainstays in the postseason. And it was very clear after Craig left that his jersey, the number 17, wasn't going to be worn again for a while. Would it ever be retired? Who is to say? On one hand, the Seahawks had only retired one player's number before by the mid-90s, and that was Steve Largent, a surefire Hall of Famer, of which Dave Craig was not. On the other hand, they did retire the number 12 jersey for the fans, so it truly was up in the air as to whether or not Craig's number would hang in the rafters of the kingdom forever and be worn again. However, at the very least, it was going to be out of circulation for the foreseeable future. Which made sense, seeing as there was no reason to issue the number yet. There were plenty of numbers in circulation, and people had strong ties to the number 17 jersey. Seeing as Craig wore it for over a decade, and was an idol for many people. As a side note, to learn more about the career of Dave Craig, click the card in the upper right corner. However, even the best slave plants of mice and men go awry. Because despite the fact that Dave Craig was the only player in franchise history to wear the number 17 jersey at the time, and the team had no real plans to reissue this number anytime soon, another quarterback came into the fold. And that quarterback was this man right here, John Freeze. This was the third team that Freeze was on, as he started his career out with the San Diego Chargers from 1990 to 93, before playing the 1994 season over in the nation's capital in Washington. During the 1995 offseason, the Seahawks signed him to a two-year deal worth $1.45 million, with the idea being that he would back up Rick Myrer, the team's first-round pick from 1993, who had a great rookie season, all things considered, but did next to nothing in 1994, suffering from the dreaded sophomore slump. And for Freeze, when he came to Seattle, he wanted one thing in particular. That thing? None other than the number 17 jersey. He wanted to be the second player to ever wear that jersey. And it would be one thing, if the Seahawks just flat out announced that they were not going to retire Dave Craig's number, and that they were going to put it back into circulation. 
If that happened, then this is a non-story. Of course, Freeze can wear the number then. It would be one thing if Dave Craig himself said, I don't care if you wear my number or not. I give you my permission if you want to wear the number 17 jersey. Again, that's a non-story if that were to happen. But here, when it came to John Freeze, none of that happened. None of that whatsoever happened. For starters, Freeze didn't want the number 17 jersey because he wanted to honor Craig or anything like that. He didn't wear it for a family member or at the request of Craig or a Seahawks official or anything along those lines. He just wore the number 17 jersey because he felt like it. He wore it his entire career, wearing that number when he was in high school in Idaho, when he went to college and played his college ball at Idaho for the Vandals, and in the NFL, when he played for San Diego and Washington. He just wanted to keep that same number. Said Freeze quite bluntly and simply, it's a number that's important to me. Now, requesting the number of a team legend, if you're actually a good player, is one thing. J.J. Watt had permission from Marshall Goldberg to wear the number 99 jersey with the Arizona Cardinals. But Watt is a first ballot Hall of Famer. Hayden Manning had permission from Frank Tribuca to wear his number 18 jersey with the Denver Broncos. But Manning is a first ballot Hall of Famer. Heck, even the Seahawks themselves experienced this a decade later, when Jerry Rice, the greatest receiver of all time, got permission to wear his number 80 jersey from Steve Largent. All three of those aforementioned guys were established legends who were even better than the players they were taking their jersey numbers from for the time being. But for John Freeze? For a backup quarterback? For a man who, prior to joining the Seahawks, started 27 games and went 7-20 in those starts while throwing exactly as many touchdowns as interceptions? Yeah, that's a bit different. That's a bit egotistical. For some perspective, it's the difference if Aaron Rodgers decided that he wanted the number 12 jersey when he came to New York versus if the Jets decided to sign Gardner Minshew with quarterback instead, and he wanted the number 12 jersey. Two very different reactions and two very different sets of circumstance. But adding the fuel to this fire in particular was the fact that Craig himself didn't want anyone wearing his number. Despite everything that Craig might have said in 1995 during a press conference prior to a game against his former team, in an attempt to not give his former team any bulletin board material whatsoever, he spent a good chunk of the season in Seattle. When he was not in Arizona playing with the Cardinals, he was up in Seattle and even was able to visit the Seahawks facility from time to time. There, he ran into John Freeze and even asked Freeze himself to give up the number 17 jersey. Freeze said no. Again, it's one thing when the player himself gives you his blessing to wear his number, but when they don't? Oh man, that is quite the awkward situation to be in, especially when you decide to wear that number still. But hang on, because it gets even more bizarre. Because when Craig asked Freeze to give up the number 17 jersey, Freeze said that he wasn't going to give it up until Craig got into the Ring of Honor. Said Freeze, the day that he goes and goes up on the Ring of Honor or that sort of thing, I'll change my number the next day. Wait a second, wait a second, time out. How does that logic make any sense? So you fully admit that Craig is likely going into this team's Ring of Honor. And once that happens, the number will be out of circulation. You admit that the number 17 jersey is important to Craig and to Seattle. Craig can't go in it right now because he's still playing and is still an active player. But when he retires, that's when you're going to change your jersey number? That seems like very backwards logic, don't you think? It's almost like if a quarterback got drafted right now by the Green Bay Packers and said, I want the number 12 jersey, but the moment Aaron Rodgers retires and you put him in the ring, 
I'll change my number immediately. It's like you're admitting guilt that you should not be doing this. Especially since you basically admitted that Craig didn't want you wearing his number. And the Seahawks likely don't want you wearing Craig's number. So the number 17 jersey is so important to you that you need it right now. But when the inevitable happens, that you know is going to happen, and is not really contingent on anything, seeing as Craig's career in Seattle was done, it's not important enough to you that you'll continue to wear it? I mean, you get why this caused such an uproar, sparked such a backlash, and created a bizarre controversy, right? John Freeze was playing the middle and was sitting on the fence and was just ticking everyone off in the process. Nothing about the logic used by John Freeze here made any sense. He didn't want to give up the number 17 jersey, even though that's Dave Craig's number, but will be happy to give it up down the line because it's Dave Craig's number. The number is so important to him that he's fine taking it from Dave Craig, but it's not so important that he's fine giving it back to Craig whenever that day comes. It makes no sense. My head hurts just thinking about it. It's just a sea of contradictions that your head struggles to process. Eventually, this man right here, Dave Craig, got his name into the Ring of Honor in 2004, becoming the eighth Seahawk at the time to receive this honor. And while the number 17 jersey has been reissued since, as it has not been retired, it wasn't reissued until 2008, when Billy McMullen wore the jersey. And no one of note has worn the number 17 jersey in the 21st century, as everyone that's worn it has been off the team after one or two seasons. So the number 17 jersey is still identified with Hall of Very Good quarterback Dave Cram. But for four absolutely bizarre seasons, it was identified with, of all people, John Freeze, against everyone's wishes and against what common sense and logic dictate. Because in 1995, the Seahawks, in a highly controversial move that is still talked about amongst those who remember it nearly three decades later, did not put a freeze on the request by John Freeze. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes at 9 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.